What is up guys, it's MTG of MTG Reviews. Today, we have the VW T-Cross for a review. I'll be showing you its features, and it actually has some odd features. Give my opinions on how it feels. Then you sit up high here, it's a crossover, so that's expected. And cover the design as well. At a starting price of 399,000, is this a Polo SUV, or does it have its own identity? Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't. Thank you. So this car shares a platform with the Polo, meaning it's sharing multiple mechanical parts including the chassis with the Polo. And it actually shares the 1 litre 3 cylinder engine as well. So as it seems right now, it's just a Polo SUV, but let's dissect it furthermore. So the exterior look is very different from the Polo. Which one looks better? Uh, well that's a subjective topic, but then I'd lean towards the Polo. So here we have the comfort line spec, which is the base. Spec, as you can see, we have the halogen headlights instead of the LEDs. You'd get the LEDs headlines on the high line as standard. The front look of this car reminds me of the VW Atlas, which we don't get here in SA. This one is just a bit more friendly looking. The side is fairly simple looking, nothing hectic here. It's just classic VW uh, with a sharp line, sharp shoulder line, and nothing drastic. It looks like a polo actually. However, it has some weird cladding which gives it the SUV off-roader look. But we all know this is very far from being one. However, I actually do like the look of it. Now, the back is what I have mixed feelings with. I'm not a big fan of these taillights. I don't find these piano black plastics necessary. They could have made a simpler looking tail lamps. And we have a rear spoiler up top and we have roof rails which you can use to put a storage box. So my overall thoughts of the exterior is that it looks good, but it needs a refresh in which VW has just announced a few days back and I'm not feeling it as much. I understand it's a facelift, but they could have done more just like they did with the Polo. This one is just still like, uh, it feels old in the tooth. Now let's get inside. So this car has leather seats, which one of these died in order to get them. Thank you guys. However, you can't option this when you get the comfort line. So I'm thinking these are aftermarket seats. They look decent, but then they have some fitment issues, which actually, yeah, proves to me that they are not factory. So the layout of the design of the dashboard is just like the Polos, but this one has some extra storage up here, which comes in handy. And we have a nice looking steering wheel, which has multifunctional buttons, which you can use to set cruise control, page through the info display on the gauge cluster. Yeah, that's it. And to the infotainment. Yeah, and even almost everything is basically the same. It actually is the same as the Polo that I've reviewed. You have this gesture thing which is a gimmick sometimes works out sometimes doesn't yeah that's yeah so you have assistance what do you have it's a yeah driver alert system i think it's yeah detects potential signs of driver when it's tired and yeah so that's basically it so yeah i did do a review of the basically the whole infotainment system you can check it out on the polo review i'll link it up here so yeah that's it now to the odd features that i found in this interior the bonnet opener latch is positioned in the passenger side and it's supposed to be on the driver side but it's on the passenger side in which i think it's because this car was made for the brazilian market in mind because they drive on the right hand side so meaning the steering wheel is on the left hand side so when they bought it here they didn't bother changing that and another odd thing is the cut out here um, just near the steering wheel it doesn't open but it looks like it should but it doesn't but you see there's a cutout in which other vw models actually does open like the Arteon. and lastly we have the vanity mirrors they don't have a light which i think should be a must have if you already have mirrors i mean how are you gonna see yourself at night if you don't have like those lights they're very important when they come in the vanity mirrors okay cool Another thing here on the dashboard, lastly, is the small glove box and which, yeah, yeah, what can we do? It's small, but at least we have uh, the armrest center storage, uh, which you can fit one tissue roll. Hmm. Yeah. Now to the back seats. I actually fit comfortable here, better than a Polo, since this is a bigger car. Yeah, it feels much better. 
And there's an odd thing going on here. These seats are sitting on rails. And have these triggers which suggest that you can move them back and forth. But then I couldn't get them to do that. I don't know if it's me or they actually don't move at all. But I couldn't really get myself to do that. In which if they don't move back and forth, why are they here? Why at all are they sitting on rails? Okay, now lastly on the interior of the boot. Firstly, opening it is a bit different from other VW modern cars. As you can see, you can use the logo as the opening handle. There's a button which you press under the logo in which it works. Other manufacturers do that. So if you're not coming from a VW, yeah, no king is no problem. Uh, and the boot is size at 377 liters, which is way, way, way more than a Polo. If you're looking for storage, I think this is a better car than the Polo. So yeah, my overall thoughts on this interior, it's basically the same as a Polo in which is solid. The belt is nice, everything is okay. This actually has some more rough textures. Yeah, so, but then you sit up high here, it's a crossover, so that's expected. It's actually, it's a, everything is nice. Everything within arm's reach is a solid interior. It's, yeah, it's good. So how does this drive? It really is comfortable and the higher ground clearance gives you some confidence as the view is very clear you can see everything around you it drives nice it's comfortable the drive is supple and as you might have seen it has a five-speed manual which feels good I choose this over the DSG on the Polo when driving in this sort of conditions as it has smooth power delivery and talking about power we have 70 kilowatts and 175 Newton meters of torque from the one cylinder not one cylinder one liter three cylinder engine which feels okay i don't have complaints here it's okay it's not a fast car it's not meant to be one so yeah and the claim fuel consumption is at 5.5 liters per 100 kilometers which is actually great now to the cost of ownership this car is a base price of 399,000. however this car has some optional features namely the park package which cost uh, 10,800 rands and the infotainment package which, which cost 8,900 rands and the price goes up to 418 and 700 rands so at an interest rate of 12% over 6 years with no deposit the installment would be 8,278 monthly and factoring in petrol at an estimate of 1.7 and insurance at 2,000 the total will be 11,978 rands and would go down to 11,159 with 10% deposit so it is expensive and that leads us to this to what I believe I believe like buying a new car doesn't make sense now the prices don't really much make much sense so i advise you to look for a pre-owned one at a lower mileage so just like this one it's basically the same as this one but it's going for 300k with full service history or this one it has 12k kilometers on the clock and it actually looks okay you just have to do some research about it and go and check it out in person and which i believe is a good deal is this one at 2000 kilometers and it has the 85 kilowatts is the dsg model it's basically cheaper and there's more you can find you just still have to do some research and know what you want so yeah that's all from me catch you on the next one